Hello, everyone. Thank you again for tuning in to Save News TV. And this is What's Going On in Israel. How are you doing today, Callie? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing marvelous. I'm doing marvelous. I tell you, there's just so much going on. And then sometimes you run into a slower news cycle. Is that not correct? <laughs> Yeah, it seems like the news cycle here has been a little slow, and sometimes I'm okay with that. <laughs> yes, yes, because a, a few a month or so ago, um, news were happening so fast yeah. that it was hard to keep up. So sometimes it's good for the news cycle to slow down a little bit. <laughs> right, and just let us catch our breath a little and, you know, stay, um, you know, just stay at peace. <laughs> exactly. So even though the news cycle is slow, we still have a few things to talk about. Is there? Yes. We, and they're kind of interesting, actually. Um, so it's been a little slow, but I think that there's some depth to the topics coming, coming up today. Um, so the first one is about construction and the settlements. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So, um, if you're unaware, the settlements are in what the media calls the West Bank. And the West Bank is actually what your Bible calls Judea and Samaria. Um, so we've been in a settlement freeze for over a year now. And um, just recently, they have opened up construction again in the settlements. And this is a cycle that happens repeatedly because it's tied to the two-state two solution. Um, the settlements go in and out of times of construction and times of construction freezes. And of course, since I'm an architect, I'm always very interested in this process. Um, <laughs> it's always fascinating to me because it is my field. Um, but I want to just say, too, about the settlements, because when you hear that word settlements, it gives this idea that it's kind of just an outpost and um, small or unstable. But these settlements can be quite large. We have one Ma'ale Adamim, and it's 90,000 people. Mm, um, that's a right. whole town. <laughs> yes, they're small cities. And... Uh, they're being built out in Judea and Samaria, which the media again calls the West Bank. And it's it's land that is unoccupied. Um, so there it's it looks like desert, you know, desert hills, um, sometimes not so deserty, sometimes more like olive, old olive groves. Um, but it's very, very uninhabited, I think is probably the better word. Uh, mm. It's not like it's not as if Israel is pushing people out of this space in order to build cities. Um, there's no one there. <laughs> as we like to call it in America, uh, it's off grid right now. <laughs> yes, it's off grid. <laughs> there may be some Bedouins, but they're not permanent anyway. Bedouins move around. So, um, you know, this isn't land where people are being pushed out of the way in order for right. Israelis to build. No land is being confiscated or anything no, like that. No, not at all. Uh, and oftentimes the left leading media will give you that impression that that's what's happening and it's not. But it's still one of those issues where when they go, when the settlers, the, the Jews who go there are called the settlers, when they go and they build settlements, it is staking claim of the land in a different way. Um, which threatens the two-state solution process. Uh, so it's considered to be sort of controversial in that regard. Um, but just recently, they made a way for 3,000 new housing units to be approved. Um, and the, again, this was after a year-long freeze in settlement construction. Um, so 1,800 of them approximately are in their final improvement and then about 1,300 are in the advanced um, stages of the planning process. So personally, I view this as good news because I think that it's good for the Jewish people to stake claim of the land that God has given them. Um, and again, no one's being pushed out of this land. It's completely uninhabited. So it shouldn't 
theoretically it shouldn't be an issue, but it is <laughs> uh, because it's coming against something that God has ordained. Um, in fact, the state, the U.S. State Department has criticized this um, opening of settlement construction. Um, a representative from the State Department, Ned Price, he's quoted as saying, we strongly oppose the expansion of the settlements, which is completely inconsistent with efforts to lower tensions and to ensure calm and damages the prospect for a two-state solution. So right there, he said it, you know, construction in the settlements is damaging the two-state solution. Um, and then here in our government, um, there have been some people who have criticized what's happening as demonstration that our government is actually more right-leaning and not what they've been calling a change government. Because after Netanyahu left, they wanted this change government. Uh, but of course, Naftali Bennett, you know, the coalition they put together is kind of uh, center left leaning, but Naftali Bennett historically has been more right leaning than Netanyahu. And the settlement construction is one of those key issues where he has been more to the right of Netanyahu. Um, this has been an issue that throughout his entire political career, he's really pushed and advanced. He's always been pro settlement construction. Um, so there's been some criticism come up about that as well. But I do think it's important for us to look at this a little bit through a biblical worldview. Exactly. So just, yeah. Let's look at so, the word. <laughs> that's right. So I did. I pulled some scripture for you all. Um, so when this comes up, because actually last time we talked about um, when I introduced Naftali Bennett to you all um, several months ago when he was first inaugurated or sworn in as prime minister, and we were discussing his position on the settlement, we did get some critical comments from viewers about our position in support of settlement construction, which I thought was interesting. It's always good to hear, even, even those of you who don't agree, it's, it's good to hear from you and just see where our audience is. Exactly. Um, and yeah. that's the wonderful thing. We want to hear from everyone and their opinions and um, we're, we don't censor. Right. <laughs> Exactly. So I did want to, I pulled some scripture for you all because I wanted you to see why this is an important issue in the day that we live in. Okay. So we know from Genesis 15, 18 through 19, um, that the land of Israel is an inheritance to the Jewish people. I'm just going to read this passage to you. It says on that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram saying to your offspring, I give this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. So this passage, and there are others that restate this exact same thing. I just pulled one for the sake of time, but this passage is clarifying that the land of Israel is from the river in Egypt, which is the Nile, exactly. all the way to the Euphrates River. And modern Israel doesn't occupy, it doesn't embody the full scope of territory that God has given to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Um, it's very small in comparison to what God has promised the nation of Israel. But that is the boundary that God has promised. And Judea and Samaria, the quote unquote West Bank, is clearly part of that promise that God gave to, to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, so then I have another one, Genesis 17, 7 through 8. It says, And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you and your offspring after you the land of your sojourning, all the land of Canaan, an everlasting possession and I will be their God. And again, this same sentiment is, is repeated in multiple verses in scripture, which we could exegete really clearly and easily. Um, but I just pulled this one for today. But the word of God says that it's an everlasting possession for the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Nowhere in scripture is this voided, not even after the cross, not after Yeshua's work on the cross is this voided. The word of God says it's an everlasting 
possession. There are even some places where it says as long as the heavens and the earth exist. It's an everlasting possession. Okay, so if someone starts to tell you that this went away at the cross, that's not true according to God's word. No, it's Romans, not. Right, Romans 11. And plus, Yeshua came to fulfill, not to abolish the law, okay? Right, exactly. So, um, and he's here, he was here to fulfill the word. So that is the word. He's, he, you know, the, and no one can come and nullify it later. No, that's right. And this it's just like in Revelations where it states that you shouldn't add nor take away from his word. So right. anyone trying to take away his word or, you know, change it, uh, then they are definitely out of order because no one yes. should add nor take away. Right. It is clear that God has promised this to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Jewish people. And even Romans 11, it says that the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. So, you know, he's speaking in that passage directly to Israel, about Israel. He's saying that um, for the sake of the gospel, they're enemies, but for the sake of the patriarchs, they're loved, and that the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. So these things that God promised the, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they still stand. There is no replacement here. The church no. has not replaced this. The church, the cross has not fulfilled or there's a there's something called fulfillment theology, which gets into a bigger issue, a bigger discussion. It's similar to replacement theology. It's a little different. But the work of the cross doesn't make this covenant null and void. This exactly. covenant still stands. Okay? And I think that's very important to remember. And if someone tries to tell you otherwise, you need to ask them to show you in God's word. Because they can't. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. It's not there. Bring the receipts. Bring the receipts. <laughs> right. They can't show you in God's word what they believe. If they believe that this doesn't stand today, it stands today. Okay. Um, and then I have another passage here from Ezekiel 28, 25 through 26. Um, this one speaks to the pro prophetic nature of building homes here in Israel. Okay. Um, thus says the Lord God. When I gather the house of Israel from the peoples among whom they are scattered and manifest my holiness in them in the sight of the nations, then they shall dwell securely in it and they shall build houses and plant vineyards. They shall dwell securely when I execute judgment upon all their neighbors who have treated them with contempt. They will know that I am the Lord their God. Okay, so this, this, is, this passage here in Ezekiel it's actually in context, it's talking about the regathering of the nation of the nation of Israel into the land of Israel after they had been dispersed into the Gentile nations. And so exactly. we've seen that happen. Okay. This is something that we have seen happen in the last century when the Jewish people began to return to the when nation. The people of Israel began to return, but they have they are still spread um abroad and um there's still a lot that need to be returned to israel yes. right so they're still they're still coming in um but we start we saw it start happening in, in the mid 1800s in large numbers and it's increased and then of course the nation the modern nation of israel of course was was formed in the 1940s 1947 um so this is prophetic fulfillment of god's word that the people of Israel would return to the land of Israel. And when they arrive, they're building homes and they're planting vineyards. And you can also find this in Isaiah. There's several different passages in the Bible where you can find building homes and planting vineyards. Those are two prophetic symbols of the Jewish people returning to the land and making it their home. Um, so for the Jewish people to go out into Judea and Samaria and to build, to build homes, it's a prophetic act. They are fulfilling Bible prophecy. And exactly. ultimately, that is why anything that doesn't uphold a biblical worldview wants to come stand against what they're doing. It's not really about peace. It's really about coming against something that the, that the Lord is doing to prove himself holy to the nations. And the Lord is doing to fulfill a covenant that he established with Abraham. That's what it what what's happening here. So um, when you see in the media criticism of of the settlements growing and of construction taking place, that's not of the Lord. 
Um, I believe fully that it's the Lord's heart that the Jewish people would live here in the land and that they would fully dwell in it and that they would do as his word says, build homes and plant vineyards. It's very, very important, I think, according to God's word that this happens. Um, and so it says here also that, you know, he would exercise judgment on all who treated them with contempt. So if you look at Joel 3, um, verses 1 and 2 here, this says, in context, this is speaking of the last days, okay? So it says, For behold, in those days and at that time when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, Remember, Judah is Judea, right? So that's the West Bank. Exactly. Um, I will gather all the nations and bring them to the Valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will in enter into judgment with them there on behalf of my people, my heritage Israel, because they have scattered them the among the nations and have divided up my land. So there is a judgment for every nation that, that scatters the Jewish people and divides God's land. This is God's word. And I know this might sound kind of strange for some people um, to think that God would care about land this much, but this is his word. This is not, exactly. you know, this is not my opinion here. His word says that anyone who divides his land will be taken to this Valley of Jehoshaphat and will be judged for doing so. They will be judged for dividing God's land. Dividing God's land is a sin. Yes. Well, one thing the, the word says, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. We can take it, pull it, pull this in that the earth being um, land and the world. And so it, it all belongs to God. And of course, God is concerned about the taking of land. So that's why it's important that the children of Israel receive the land that God has ordained and spoke to be rightfully theirs. Right. And so you need to make sure too, whatever nation you are in, you need to be advocating that your nation will uphold God's promise to the, to the descendants of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, that this land would belong to them. And you need to advocate for that both as an intercessor. And I would even encourage you to write your government officials and advocate in that way as well, because if your nation is responsible for dividing God's land, there will be judgment on your nation, um, according to God's word. Exactly. So that's something, you know, it comes from holding that account, holding that accountable is something that comes from the people. So um, let that be something that gets in your heart and something that you act on um, to just continue to um, keep your nation in line with God's word here. Okay. Yeah. So um, we'll see how that progresses. I hope it does. Um, I, uh, at some point in my life, when my babies are a little bit bigger, I, I would actually love to do some architecture work out in Judea and Samaria and help fulfill this prophecy. That would be wonderful. It <laughs> is a dream of my heart. So um, and, we'll see. And for those that are interested in reading the article regarding the 3,000 settler home approved, um, it is from the Times of Israel, and I have placed the link to the article in the chat so you can read it yourself because we do bring receipts. And of course, the scriptures that we'll highlight one more time that Callie brought up for you to go back and reference are Genesis 15, 18 through 19, Genesis 17, 7 and 8. Ezekiel 28, 25, and 26. And lastly, Joel 3, 1, and 2. So um, these are the scriptures. So study to show yourself approved, rightfully dividing the word of truth. Right. <laughs> Amen. It gets in your heart more, too, if you go look at it for yourself. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So do that. <laughs> Okay, so then the other topic that we have today is just about tourism. Um, Israel is finally opening up tourism November 1st. So this is kind of a complicated situation, though. And I'm curious, after we talk about it some, to hear from some of you to see, would you come? 
<laughs> All right. Will so, you be there? Yeah, so, will you be what? here? So tourism is one of Israel's major industries, and it has, I mean, it has severely taken a hit with everything that's happened since 2020. It has totally shut down. We went through months and months and months when our airport was completely closed. We were not letting anyone in and out. Even Israelis were stuck out of the country for a time. And we had elections coming up. So it went to the Supreme Court in which the Supreme Court ruled. And <laughs> like, said, get back in here and vote. <laughs> yes, because we don't have absentee va ballots here in Israel. You have to vote in person. And you show your ID at least twice. In most, most countries, <laughs> not for the United States. Yeah, it's much different. <laughs> so um, the, sorry, just sh shaking my computer here. Okay, <laughs> so this went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court actually said that our airport closures were so severe that it was an assault on democracy, Ooh. and they ordered them open. I mean, the court took a really hard line on this issue, so they opened, they opened the airports back up, um, and at that point, we were just allowing Israelis to come in. And then there was a short time where they were allowing a few tour groups and family members of Israelis who had special permission. You had to apply in order to come. And you could only come if there was a significant family event, such as um, a wedding or a birth or a bar mitzvah, something that had religious and life cycle oh, yeah significance funeral you know it had to be a significant event for people to be allowed in and so we've actually been closed to tourists since march um 2021 um and they have decided that they're going to open it up to tourists on november 1st they have had some capsule tours come through just to test things i actually ran into some tourists the other day um on my daily route, I was crossing the street and here was a tour group and it was such an unusual experience. I, I had a lot of emotion actually. <laughs> <laughs> I saw them and I was like, well, this is how it's supposed to be, but it hasn't been. It was very interesting just to see tourists. So um, November 1st, they've opened it up. And um, the thing is, is that there's a lot of requirements in order for the tourists to come in. So the first is that you have to have the thing, okay? Um, the thing. Right. Um, Which is odd. Most countries allow for, even in the United States, um, a negative test three days, 72 hours prior to entering and to return to your native country, you the same stipulation. Right. But they are requiring... Uh, inoculation. Yes, right. And it has to be within six months of your visit. Mm -hmm. Now right. that's interesting. They know something and it has to six months and one day, but go ahead. Yeah, right. <laughs> I digress. It has to be. <laughs> yeah. And if it, if your six months runs out while you're here, then you have to be subject to regular tests, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. They're still kind of working out some details. Some of these plans are a little confusing um, and they're, they have been changing. So I'll just give a caveat that everything I'm saying here, if you are planning on coming, run by your tour guide. <laughs> well, one thing <laughs> also that people um, realize is that this is news and news, yeah. the news cycle change expediently. We're live. I, we could, you know, we're talking about this. These are the guidelines here. And as we speak, they could be changing. So um, we, tr we would, we keep you up to date as of the moment that the live recording happens. So as of this right. moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So again, the, to begin with, you have to have the thing, the thing within the last six months, um, the second one within the last six months, or booster. Okay. Um, and Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold, hold, stop right there. You have to have your first one, or you know, you have to be inoculated, or you have to be inoculated twice with a booster. Which one is it? You have to have your second one has to be within six months. So you okay. have to have completed the full cycle. You can't just get one and show up. You know, you have to have completed the two dose cycle. Mm, wow. Um, 
or if and if you're beyond six months, you have to have a booster. Um, so mm. you have to have you have to have had your second one or your booster within six months of your travel dates. Mm. Um, they are accepting all the major brands. Um, I don't know if I can say them. But no, all, I think everybody knows. Okay, all the major brands are being accepted. Okay. Um, the other option is that you can be recovered within the last six months, but you have to have a proof of PCR. Or you can have been recovered at any time, but you have to have proof of PCR and one, one dose. So if you've been recovered, but more than six months ago, you have to have one dose. Okay. And let, and let me say this to the audience. Uh, we save news are not censoring these words. The, the other platforms are, but um, know this, that you can get um, our information and things are not censored on our Roku, you know, Save News TV on Roku and our Rumble platform. So I'm going to put this down here so you can. Um, yeah, we're trying to be careful about our words because we want to stay on our platforms. <laughs> right. We want to be able to stay on. And and I'm like, like I stated earlier, I'm not mad at them. This is their platform. They do what they want to. But we want to be able to stay here so we can bring you the information and more critical things when we have to break it down, um, that we don't have to use code words. We will bring it over to um, Save News TV on Roku. You can, If you have a Roku, you can watch it. Or you can um, watch it on Rumble at rumble.com slash save news. You can listen to it on our radio station, uh, Save News radio.com and it plays on five o'clock we'll play this show at five o'clock all week until the next show so in the event and then we have podcasts uh all the major on uh, spotify and all of them just download it from spotify um or one of the other ones uh i i heart radio and all of that but um and if you have any questions you can contact us and we will let you know where you can watch because our the more critical things that we bring um would not be on the three four major um, platforms that heavily censor but right. go ahead cal okay so um that kind of covers who's allowed to enter you have to of course have thing two or a booster within six months of your trip you can be recovered within six months and enter um, with proof. You have to have your PCR to prove that you've re recovered, that you were sick and recovered. You have to have proof, okay? Um, or you can have recovered anytime, but you still have to have one dose of the thing um, within six months of your trip. Then you have to fill out a health ministry declaration form 48 hours before you travel. And you have to have a PCR 72 hours maximum before you board your flight. Once you get into Israel, you have another PCR at the airport and you quarantine until you get your test results back. And then if it's negative, you're allowed to go out and tour. If it's positive, you have to stay in quarantine for 10 days. Um, and if you're with a group, your group will move as a capsule. So you're not allowed to deviate from your group. You have to stay with your group and move around. But they are also allowing individuals to come in as individual tourists as well. So it's pretty complicated. Um, there's some concern because 25% of tourism in Israel is from the United States and it's faith-based. And they're well aware that a lot of the people who are declining this thing are believers. Um, so there is concern within the tour industry that the numbers are not going to be as high as what the government is anticipating because there are more people declining than they're expecting. Um, they are also 
mulling over some other possibilities because there's been some discussion about the fact that some nations are not recommending or allowing the booster at present. Uh, it hasn't been approved for people under 65 in the United States, for example, unless you have um, pre-existing conditions. So well, let's get something real clear here. Let me let me let me stop here. Okay. Nothing <laughs> has been approved, approved. <laughs> um, by the FDA. On, the only thing that has been approved is not even available in this country. That's so, right. in the United States. So let's let's be clear here. Yes. You can go to FDA.gov and find out for yourself. It's, it's absolutely. You can look at Liberty Council. They have some great material on this. But yes, exactly. I should have said authorized. <laughs> Is that um, right? So the booster hasn't been authorized for the United States, for example. So that's going to marginalize a large set of subset of the population who maybe received thing one and thing two, but more than six months ago. So therefore, they can't enter into the country because they don't have the appropriate um, requirements. So there has been some discussions about the possibility of allowing that group of people to come in and either have a daily antigen test, um, which is also in the nose, or a PCR every three days. Okay. I and think that they are, you know, really, uh, they're being very unrealistic. I think uh, so too. Their tourism is going to plummet. It's going to plummet. Because people are not, you know, you're on vacation. You're not on a um, health sabbatical where every day you, you know, I'm either testing or, you know, getting stuff stuck up my nose or every three days. Yeah. Uh, nobody's going to go through that. It's, it's not right. happening, you know. And also, I want to be clear too. It's just the laundry list, even those that have been inoculated and fall within those guidelines. There's still such a laundry list that people don't want to go through all that. I mean, we're Americans. Right. We don't go through all that. We, you know, hey, we we like it fast. We are the McDonald society. We like it fast. <laughs> we like it quick. Better we worse. like it easy. And they are making it as hard. And we are just not going to have it. It's yeah. Well, life. welcome to our daily life. <laughs> well, so you all have a tour. Look. The people in Israel better tour Israel because I can tell you now they're getting ready to see if they keep on, along this course, they're going to see the sharpest decline in tourism that they have ever received uh, since the recording of tourism in the, in the yeah. nation of Israel. OK. <laughs> yeah, I think so, too, um, because when you come, like when you fill out that 48 hour in advance declaration form with the Ministry of Health. That is so that they can issue you your green passport. So you get a green passport when you come, which means that when you go to your hotel, your restaurants, they're going to be scanning it. So you're also being surveilled while you're here um, with that green passport. And so also, you know, we have option here in Israel right now where there's stations where you can get an antigen test. Um, with results that are 15 to 30 minutes and it gives you it gives you a green passport for a day or you can go get a PCR done that gives you pass, a green passport for about three days. And so that's this what they're trying to implement with the tourist as well. Um, this is so disheartening to hear this going on in Israel. This this is sounding like the Holocaust all over again. It really is. It's been like the beginning of it. I mean, the tracking, the um, you, you, so you the, show me your papers before you go out to eat. Right. You have to show yeah. papers. Mm -hmm. If you know, we definitely need to line this up with scripture because people really need to understand that history is repeating itself. It really is. It really is. And prophecy is being fulfilled. But these things have to happen for Yeshua to return. So as unfortunate as it is, um, it, it must come to pass. It, it has to. Yeah. I think what's sad about it to me, um, for the sake of the tourism, though, is that coming over here is an extremely amazing experience. Um, to walk where Yeshua walked, to see the sights for yourself, it is something that can really build people's faith. To engage with the people, to get to know the land, 
um, it's an incredible experience to do a pilgrim tour. And I well, they I don't, don't want your faith to be built. They don't want. <laughs> I mean, let's, let's let's call it what it is. Anything it that can discourage um, yeah. glorification of Yahweh. Yeah. They're going to do it. I mean, this right. is, which um, we're going to, um, Kelly and I discussed this um, last month, correct? As far mm -hmm. as we're going to do a deep dive. Now, the deep dive will not be on these platforms. It is just not because we just need to talk and we need to <laughs> tell it like mm -hmm. it is. But it will be on um, our Roku and Save News Radio, Rumble, uh, Twitch TV dot slash Save News, and um, our podcast, if the podcast let, allow us to keep it up. But we're going to do a deep dive and we will do a short video letting you know what the topics are and where to go to watch them once we have completed it. But we're going to do a deep dive into this. Uh, we do encourage you, I like like I said, it to um, watch Save News TV on Roku. We have other things over there. We have other ministries and other things that's bringing the word of the word of God and and breaking down things. And we constantly add in daily. It's, it's you know, so just make sure you add Save News when you go on your Roku. Um, rate it as a five now. Rate it as five. <laughs> <laughs> and um, come back often because we are definitely adding more ministries. Um, I, we have comedy over there. We have a whole bunch of things over there. Um, and we'll have legal, medical, a lot of things over there for you to watch. But Callie, I didn't, go, go ahead. But I wanted to let them know again that uh, regarding our planned deep dive in November, Right. Yeah. So um, that's basically the current situation with tourism. Um, but I would love to hear from you guys in the comments with all the requirements. Would you still come? Um, would you come over? You know, or does it seem so daunting? Is there something? Because I even think if I'm going to spend several thousand dollars on a trip and I could potentially get a positive PCR test once I arrived and missed 10 days. And even if it's, even if the test is wrong, you still, <laughs> yeah, you know, right. you're, you're going to be 10 days and that's your vacation. Most, that's most a big risk. I think that's a big financial risk. Um, they were also saying that they may have tourists um, actually buy COVID insurance before their trip. Um, this is another one they're mulling over. And they still don't know who exactly is paying for all these tests. Um, that so, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, like I stated, um, they're getting ready to see the sharpest decline in their tourism that they've ever received since the beginning, since they began recording tourism. Mark yeah. that word. Mark that word. Yeah, and, that uh, might be, they might need to hear that. You know, they might need to feel that. You know, just that the rules. Oh, are they're going to feel it. Yeah. <laughs> they're <laughs> going to feel it. They're going to feel it. So we don't even have to be concerned with that because it, you know, it's it's happening. It's happening. So, but anyway, did you have anything else going on, Callie? That's it, really. Those two main issues there. And um, just trying to walk this out here the best that we can. Um, because, I mean, some of these things that might sound astounding to you guys, this is daily life for us. I mean, we're boycotting and we can't go to a restaurant. You're right. <laughs> you know? I mean, we could if we wanted to get an antigen test and have a 24 hour. <laughs> green passport but i'm not doing that i'm sorry i'm just not going right to and it hurts the businesses i mean it, it's gonna yeah. be it's this is gonna this is a financial bone a back breaker right. especially all of this for something that has a 95 to 98 percent 
survival record. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you right. can go to cdc.gov, fda.gov, and um, who.org to verify that. Yes. But it is what it is. <laughs> So anyway, um, everyone, we have, um, if you need prayer, we get a lot of prayer requests from people. Um, please, you know, send us a prayer request. We do pray for you. We have had several this week and we have been lifted them up before the Lord. You can email us your prayer request at pray, the number for me at savenews.com. And we'll add you on to that. If you are an intercessor and you would like to um, become a part of the prayer team to pray for people, you can also email us at prayforme at savenews.com. Now, we are not affiliated. I want to make sure we get this clear. There is a website that is prayforme.com. We have absolutely no affiliation with them. This is just an email address that we created that was easy to remember for you to send your prayer request to us. Now, if you go on that website, that is not our website and we will not be praying for you because we will not know. <laughs> mm -hmm. But if you want our team, us and our team to pray for you, uh, send your email to pray for me uh, at savenews.com. We also have, you know, I know a lot of you are sending it in the comment section, you're sending it in the DMs. Either way you send it, we will see, receive it and um, uh, add you. But this is the easiest way for us to keep them all in order. All right, then. We just want to thank you so much, everyone, for allowing us into your homes. We appreciate you so much. And um, as we always say, Shabbat Shalom. Yeah, Shabbat Shalom.